Blizzard occasionally puts out features in the game that players love, although it will take them away just because they were only meant to be temporary, or just caused problems for the long-term health of the game. Or they just didn't like them and stopped developing them for whatever reason. Whatever the case, let's look over 10 features that people liked, which were eventually abandoned. And at number 10, we have the Artifact Weapons. The Artifact Weapons were a system they added to the game back in the Legion expansion, which basically just gave you a super weapon that vastly increased the power level of your character through a whole bunch of passives and one active ability. And you could level the weapon like you could a player by infusing it with Artifact Power, similar to how a player would accumulate experience points to increase their level. Now. What players liked about these artifact weapons was a combination of the lore and power associated to them. Some of the weapons available were incredibly lore relevant, like the Ashbringer or the Scythe of a Loon, for example. And some became lore relevant after the expansion, like Zalatan. Although some of them were pretty random, so not every class or spec got an amazing lore relevant weapon. But a lot of them did, to the point where they were a pretty well liked feature. In addition to the fact that they vastly increased the power level of your character, and it was one of the first time Blizzard added a massive temporary power system to the game. Whereas before, the temporary power systems were generally pretty minor, like tier set bonuses or singularly legendary items. In fact, the artifact weapons increase your power level so much that it has got to be one of the strongest points characters have ever been in the history of the game, from just how much power that singular weapon gave you. Although it wasn't without its criticisms, because one of the things people hated about the artifact was just how artifact power worked. The artifact did have a hard cap on its power level, which was raised with the first major content patch, and again with the second major patch in 7.2, also adding a soft cap with the Concordance of Legion Fall, which had 50 levels, and while there was a massive amount of levels, it was pretty much impossible to ever reach the max, as each level became harder and harder to obtain. So, a lot of players would spend days farming Mob Souls in order to efficiently get the most amount of artifact power, which really soured a lot of competitive players to the whole system. Because the power increases were worth the grind, and artifact power didn't carry over to any of your ults or even your off specs, as every single spec you had, had its own artifact weapon. So if you spent a lot of time grinding your main spec's artifact power, then if you swapped to just an off spec for whatever reason, you were just straight up weaker than your other spec. And also, some people weren't too keen on every single Red Paladin having an Ashbringer, where there was realistically only supposed to be a single one in lore. So people both liked getting super important lore weapons, and didn't like seeing how common these super important lore weapons were on all the other people in the world. Although the benefits to the artifact weapons definitely outweighed the negatives when it's thought of in retrospect. Which is why it barely makes this video the number 10 spot, as it was definitely a very well liked feature by a lot of players, even if it did have a lot of big problems as well. And the feature was abandoned as soon as the expansion ended, and they just straight up disabled everything on your artifact, so you weren't even allowed to use it during the leveling process of the next expansion. And at number 9, we have Essences from Battle for Azeroth. The Essence system was Blizzard's way of trying to salvage the mistake of Azerite power, and was basically a panel which allowed you to go out and collect new active abilities you could use, which also allowed you to choose three passive abilities you would get. And the Essence system was actually pretty wonderful. Unlocking the first rank of an Essence required you to go out and do all kinds of forms of content. Then you would max out the Essence permanently once you got it to rank 3, and you can go the extra mile to hit the rank 4 of it if you just wanted a cosmetic upgrade, which just made the effect look cooler. And while the Essence wasn't without its downsides, as some players didn't like having to PvP in order to get one of their best raid Essences for example, it was actually a huge improvement over a lot of the problems people had with Azerite and even Artifacts. They were just straight up easier to grind out. You got to choose an active ability to use instead of being given only one, like what the Artifact weapon did. And you got to choose which passives affected your character instead of getting every single passive on your weapon, like with the Artifact system. And there was no cost to change any of this around. You only had a short grind in order to unlock all the slots on your Essence. The system was actually a really good upgrade to the previous system. However, it's definitely dragged down by everything else around the system. Azerite Gear is probably one of the most hated new systems added to the game, which was so bad that even though Essences were a huge improvement, people were still mad that Azerite Gear existed, because of just how parasitic the whole system was, and how it was trying to replace Tier Gear, Artifacts, and Legion Legendaries all in one. If Battle for Azeroth had just launched with Essences and not Azerite Gear, they would have been much more favorably looked back on, to the point where I'm confident Essences will be favorably looked back on someday, even if it might be a little bit too early now in only the Shadowlands, which is at the time I'm making this video. 
Which is why I put on this list, even if it's a common sentiment in the WoW community to just hate everything from Battle for Azeroth. Essences were good, even if nothing else from the expansion was. And at number 8, we have Gem Socket Bonuses. Before Wards of Draenor, equipment from raids regularly had a whole bunch of gems on them. And there is this little system where, if you put the correct gem colors to match the sockets, you get a little bonus. However, Blizzard won a campaign of making gear usable as soon as you acquired it from a raid. So, they removed gem socket bonuses from current content, and instead made it so pieces of equipment sometimes had a chance to proc a tertiary stat, which could be socketed with a gem. This is also when they removed reforging from the game, and lowered the amount of items you're allowed to enchant with enchanting. So, players went from needing about 10 different gems for their gear, to maybe getting lucky and getting one or two gem sockets. And at this point, gem socket bonuses have been gone from the game almost as long as they were in the game, so people are used to them just not being a thing anymore. And the thing with Blizzard's design philosophy around removing gem socket bonuses is that they wanted people to be able to use equipment as soon as they got it, rather than having to sim it to see if it was usable through layers of enchanting, gemming, and reforging for perfect hit values. However, people are more than ever not equipping pieces of gear as soon as they get them, before they put them through a whole bunch of sims to see if it's even an upgrade. World of Warcraft has a heavy min-max culture, and removing gems like a bonuses from the game didn't really alleviate it at all. It just removed an extra layer of customization, and kind of made jewel crafting useless instead. And at number 7, we have fast movement and legacy content. Ever since Legion, Blizzard has constantly been nerfing everything which allows you to run faster legacy content. There's still some classes which can move faster than normal, but everything as a whole has been slowed down pretty heavily. In Legion, there was a food item called Bear Tartar, which increased your movement speed by 70% for 10 seconds after you killed an enemy. It was probably one of the best buffs ever to running legacy content, as it allowed you to have a permanent speed buff while running through things. Although at the end of the expansion, they nerfed it into the ground, where instead it just provides a little bit of speed, which barely increases your speed when you're at max level. There was also speed buffs that allowed you to run at a constant high speed in legacy content, like the rogue ability Burst of Speed. This was the ability on a 3 second cooldown that allowed you to run 70% faster for 4 seconds. Since the ability cost energy to use, you had to weigh the options of giving up DPS with using that energy for the speed boost in high level content. Although in legacy content, it was just a pure speed running tool that allowed you to just complete things quicker. It was eventually removed from the game in Legion because it was also really strong in PvP, but started the decline of legacy speed increases. The Angelic Feather from the Priest class used to provide an 80% speed bonus for 6 seconds, with 3 charges, each one having a 10 second recharge. Which means, you could have an 80% speed boost for almost 30 seconds before the cooldown would get to the point where you were no longer running fast. They slowly nerfed this over time, to the point where the speed boost is only 40%, only lasts 5 seconds, and each one has a 20 second recharge time instead of only 10 seconds. So, it's impossible to use them as a quasi-permanent speed buff like you could in the past. Although, ever since the end of Legion, they've gone hard on nerfing everything else as well. There's the Rune Blade of Baron Rivendair, which used to provide a passive 10% speed increase, nerfed to only provide a minor amount of extra speed. The Rocket Boots Extreme used to provide a pretty significant speed buff, which was only really useful in Legacy content, recently nerfed to just instead provide a minor speed increase. Even the speed increase potions got a nerf. The speed increase potion from BFA, the Lightfoot Potion, increase your movement speed by 150% for 8 seconds. The new speed increase potion from Shadowlands only increases your speed by 70% for the same duration. So it's literally half as worse. In addition to the changes they did to potions in Shadowlands, where they just have a 5 minute cooldown now, where they used to have a 2 minute cooldown that couldn't recharge inside combat. It used to be possible to stack a whole bunch of passive speed increasing items and abilities in order to allow some characters to run around with over 200% speed baseline at all times. Although Blizzard has definitely decided they don't like people doing this, and have been nerfing everything that allowed the speed builds and legacy content to no longer function. So if we were to put the concept of legacy speed bonuses into a feature that was abandoned, we could definitely lay it on the feet of Bear Tartar as that was the easiest way to get great speed increases in legacy content, which was just directly nerfed into uselessness. And at number 6, we have the Chromie scenario. This was a feature added in Legion, which was basically a solo player adventure, where you would race against time in order to try to prevent Chromie from being killed in 5 different timelines. Along the way, you could also randomly loot cosmetic items and time walking badges, which is one of the few forms of currency that transcends expansions. 
and the more you did the Chromie scenario, the more you could level up Chromie in order to gain more perks. Where when you finally max it out, it was pretty easy to complete everything in less than 10 minutes. The Chromie scenario was a pretty fun solo adventure that was added as max level content, and didn't really provide power increases to your character outside of the one-time artifact power token you could get. And the main reason you would do it was just to get the cosmetic items. And what was unique about the scenario was that it was a piece of content added to the game, which was completely optional, but had a lot of fun gameplay elements to it, which is very not the norm in WoW. Rarely do they develop any single player content at max level, as WoW definitely wants you to play with other people once you hit the end game. And also rarely do they develop single player content with a whole bunch of thought and development, like the Chromie scenario, even if it was just a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of reused assets. Although the whole thing was pretty well liked, no one really minded that it was just reused assets because of the whole time travel stick. In fact, I'd be totally fine if they did more things like the Chromie scenario and just reused old assets, as there's a lot of assets in the game that are never used at max level again anyway. Although ever since Legion, they haven't really done something like the Chromie scenario since. They did have horrific visions in BFA, but those weren't purely solo player, and they provided power increases to your character, so it wasn't optional to an extent. And then Torghast in Shadowlands is another similar thing, where it's not optional because it provides power increases to your character, and isn't purely solo player, as you can do with up to five characters. Legion was kind of the king of adding solo player content, as they also had the Mage Tower system too, which was also incredibly well liked. In fact, way more so than the Chromie scenario, and was a completely different thing to the Chromie scenario too as it was just an incredibly hard solo player challenge that only provided one cosmetic. And at number 5, we have three-man scenarios. In Mist of Pandaria, Blizzard introduced the new system of three-man scenario dungeons, which were balanced around not needing a tank or healer, which basically functioned like a dungeon, except you were playing through a more story-focused event rather than a traditional World of Warcraft dungeon. And since you didn't need a tank or healer, it seemed like the perfect system for allowing DPS players to get groups pretty quickly as a vast majority of people who play the game are DPS players. And the three-man scenarios even dropped relevant dungeon gear, and there were other bonuses that made them worth running. And for the most part, players liked the three-man scenarios, and Blizzard had every intention of continuing them with Warlords of Draenor, as they even promised more of them with the new expansion. However, all the new three-man scenarios were cut in Warlords of Draenor, now only used as instance versions of quests within the world for single-player content at key points, like the attack on Karabor, and since so much was cut from the expansion, it's just kind of blended in with all the other disappointing things that happened in the expansion. However, in the very next expansion of Legion, which probably had the most amount of development time out of any expansion except for Vanilla WoW, they never actually added them back in. They continued to use them as single-player story content, but also used them for things like the Mage Tower, Chromie Scenario, and the Wither Training Scenario, then using them again, of course, for Island Expeditions and BFA. This system of the scenarios still very much gets used all the time. It's just they no longer use that system as a three-player form of content in order to acquire dungeon-appropriate gear, as the system was just seemingly abandoned for no reason. And at number four, we have guild levels. In Cataclysm, Blizzard launched a level-up system which was associated to your guild, where they gave you all kinds of really useful perks while you leveled up. And the way you leveled up was just through players in your guild just accomplishing things like leveling up their reputations or just completing guild achievements. And a lot of the benefits you got from guild levels were pretty good. In fact, we still have some of these benefits to this day. Although only like 5 of them. There used to be like 20 of them. And some of them were really good. Like granting everyone in your party a mass res. The ability to summon your entire raid to your location. And granting an extra 5% gold to your guild bank every time you looted gold. Although the guild levels were too good. They were so convenient that you literally are nerfed if you're not part of a guild. And a level 25 guild was very lucrative. There were people who would get a guild at level 25 and then just sell them to other players. Guild levels is one of the systems that was too good and was abandoned because they were too impactful. Which is a shame because they were a lot of fun, and it would be nice if they just added to the system instead of removing 90% of it. And at number 3, we have server-wide events. Back in Vanilla WoW, there was this huge server-wide event in order to open the gates of AQ40, which required the server of both factions in order to complete one of the longest quest chains in the game's history, and gather a whole bunch of materials, where they would then ring the gong and initiate an event which lasted for about a day, that spawned a whole bunch of mobs around the world, it was just a grand idea. In practice, it was such a popular event, 
that it basically just crashed every single server that started it. The WoW servers were definitely not built in order to handle the massive amount of players being online at the same time, let alone being in the same zone at one time. In fact, this is a situation which has not changed even to the modern day. WoW servers still can't handle massive amounts of players. In fact, they can barely handle 40 people in one place at a time, as the world boss right before the Chains of Domination raid constantly lags out the whole zone every time it's pulled on Tuesdays. So they still occasionally have server-wide events, but only for the launches of new expansions, like with the Demon Invasion in Legion, or even the Zombie event from the Wrath and Shadowlands launch. Although every time there is a server-wide event, there's lots of people that complain about them, which is one of the few times where I wish Blizzard would just ignore the loud player feedback and just do them anyway, because they're a lot of fun. Although even with Blizzard already being really good at ignoring loud player feedback, even they don't like to run the server-wide events very often because their servers just can't handle it. If they were to ever have a WoW 2, the only legitimate reason I've ever seen for them revamping the entire game would be just to make the game so they can run server-wide events better, as I'm pretty sure WoW would have to be redesigned from the ground up in order to accomplish this. And at number 2, we have Challenge Modes. This was a feature that was in the game for only Mista Pandaria and Warlords of Draenor, which was basically the precursor to Mythic Plus Dungeons, where if you were able to complete every dungeon from that expansion in under a certain time limit, under certain gear restrictions so that it was actually hard, then you would unlock a whole bunch of really cool cosmetics that are still valuable to this day, because they are restricted to only that one expansion. Then in Legion, they basically took the challenge mode systems and just turned it into Mythic Plus Dungeons which kind of took on a life on their own and became one of the pillars of endgame content. Although the challenge modes themselves were kind of like a mage tower type situation, where it was just a hard challenge you can take on in order to unlock cosmetic only rewards. And they were hugely popular, and were the number one reason people would buy boosts in those two expansions. And in fact, because of the challenge modes, Blizzard could probably have a time-walking Mythic Plus version of both Mista Pandaria and World of the Draenor, because those dungeons are already set up for being run speedily. Although, modern dungeons are also set up to be run speedily, so they could easily have a challenge mode version of them as well. It's not really a case of where there should be one or the other. I think it's entirely possible to have both of them available. And I'm also not really sure why they removed the challenge modes because they were widely popular. And the game still supports that system, since it's just the system they use for Mythic Plus dungeons. And before we get to the number one, let's go over a few honorable mentions. The old talent system was a fun feature for leveling up, as you gained gradual power increases every time you leveled up. It was abandoned in favor of the new talent system in Mr. Pandaria, which is definitely better for max level content in my opinion, although the old leveling system is definitely superior while leveling up. There's also reforging glyphs, hard modes, and raids in the Mage Tower, which I've talked about a few times already, and thankfully is coming back with a few rewards being recolors of the Mythic Tier 20 sets, a unique remake of the Guardian Druid's bear form, and a spell tome mount for completing all seven fights. All of these things excluded from the list because I talked about them in other videos too much, and this is an effort to make the video much more fun for my regular viewers to watch. So, now into the number one. And at number one, we have class flavor systems. Think the green fire quest line from Mr. Pandaria, the class quest from Vanilla WoW in order to unlock items and abilities. The Legion Order Halls, and even very specific things like pet training, feeding pets, ammo in their containers, rogue poisons, lockpicking, and warlock soul shards. Basically everything which made a class have flavor and RP benefits have all been slowly stripped away from the game to the point where they're not really explored unless it's part of the current content temporary power system. This is generally one of the number one things people ask for whenever I pose the question of what things removed from the game people miss the most. And that was just fun things that only their class could do, but that no one else could do. Although part of the reason Blizzard removed a lot of these things is because players also asked for them to be removed to an extent. When I was watching the Cataclysm BlizzCon footage for my video on cut content from that expansion, in the Q&A they brought up the removal of soul shards and it got a roaring cheer from the crowd. Whereas nowadays some warlocks want the return of soul shards. This is a pretty normal thing for World of Warcraft players. They complain about a system being annoying to deal with, like pet training, and then ask for it back a few years after it's been removed. Although personally, as someone who mained a hunter for five years, I definitely don't miss pet training, or the happiness mechanic at all, and I'm pretty glad that they're gone. They were fun at first, but got tedious to deal with after only a few months. 
Although there's also a lot of people who wish for that stuff would return to the game because they like the little mini games and flavorful mechanics. You used to have to go around the world and unlock foot lockers in order to level your lockpicking as a rogue. Nowadays, it just levels up with you. You have to go out and farm mobs for about an hour before raid as a warlock to have your soul shards. Nowadays, you don't have to do anything before raid except wait for the warlock to summon you. The feature of having very specific class things isn't much of a feature in the game anymore. That's largely due to Blizzard just listening to their fans though. Although, it's also one of the most asked things to be returned to the game, which I think is kind of funny. But I think it still should be the number one spot on this list, even if it's kind of vague as a feature. Alright, and that's the video. Were there any other features that should have been in this video that I may have missed, or that I didn't talk about in my honorable mentions? If so, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. And I mean like, for reals, what other amazing things were there that I just totally missed?